Pick up the blue buff, time to go face Changa. So if I'm not mistaken, at this point in the game, Changa has Divine Ruin. Yeah. Is the visual animation for it. So she is in a much better to fight me than I am to fight her. So we, we're gonna ult. We're gonna try to turn anything we can. We use our three. And we did a lot of damage to her. Unfortunately, I think she has the better abilities. We're gonna blink. Throw the one. Cast the stun. And then cast the two. And we are able to win that. What a uh, do, skibbity boo, it's your boy Shawnee B Gaming, and today we have a viewer requested video of Zonkui in solo lane. If you are new to the channel, we like to upload smite videos six to seven times a week, and we just try to shorten that learning curve for you. So if you ever have any questions or you want to see a particular god played, please leave a comment or reach out to me in the Discord server. And if you are a returning user, welcome back. Today we have some very exciting gameplay. So let's kind of go over Zong Kui's kit. Zong Kui's one is going to be a line attack that marks enemies as demons. Um, at least that's what his ability says. So you're going to use a line attack and it's going to apply kick damage over five seconds to the enemies and it's also going to apply a slow. His two, if you have a marked enemy, you're going to cast the two and then it's going to heal you up to three marked enemies. And then you're also going to store the souls of the demons into your bag. Zonkui's 3 is a stun, as simple as that. And then Zonkui's ultimate, he uses his ghosts in his bag. So each ghost he gets in his bag, he gains uh, half a protection. So at full stacks, at 60 ghosts in bag, you're going to gain 30 protections. And then whenever you ult, the protections are going to double. You're going to lose half the demons in the bag. And then you are also immune to knockups and slows while ulting. So to start off, we bought the tier 2 of Bancroft's Talon. And the reason we're using this item is it's going to allow us to really sustain in lane as Zonkui. We are going against the Changa, so she's going to have some heals as well. So we're going to cast the one and we're going to let it sit on the minions for a little bit. Whenever we pop our two onto the minions after we've casted our one, it's going to do 75% of the remaining tick damage instantly. So we tag her with the one, we're letting it tick a little bit, and then we're going to hit her with the two. She's probably going to beat us on this. Yep. We miss our one, so that puts us in a little bit of a sticky situation. So now, we, it looks like we are really getting bullied by this Changa. She's been really good at hitting us and the wave with her abilities, so we're going to have to take a kind of more defensive stance while she has lane pressure. So the problem with this start is we do not have a lot of potions. We are probably going to need to back relatively soon. We did get bullied out just a little bit. So those are her two damaging abilities. We're going to run up to wave, tag it with the one, cast the two, try to get a heal. We're going to use our three to help us get out. And then we should back after this. Just try to get home, man. We're going to cast the one, help the tower out a little bit, although I don't think it matters. And we're going to go ahead and back. We do not have enough money to get the tier 3 Bancroft's Talon. So we're going to buy two potions and then go back to lane. So we only missed one minion in that wave. Tron is going to be a little bit ahead of us because of that. So Zong Kui has a very strange basic attack. He shoots out of his gun, and then slain. on this skin, it's a little helicopter, but the basic attack will also come out of the little helicopter. So he shoots two basic attacks, um, doesn't mean he's doing double damage, 
It just means that he has a very weird basic attack. So we see Kukulin is on our blue, so we're going to make our way over there. Pick that up. We did get the XP for the big minion, so that is very nice. Make our way back. And it looks like we actually cleared wave before her. We're going to run up and tag this wave. Try to avoid the Changa. Unfortunately, we could not right there. We're going to instantly cast her too to get the souls into the bag right now we have full souls in the bag so that means we're walking around with an additional 30 protections and that's gonna allow us to kind of get away with this bancroft talon start because zong kui has protections built into his kit he's kind of a tanky mage he might be like the only warrior mage there is there's a couple of hunter mages ao kuang is an assassin mage and i kind of feel like zong kui is a warrior mage So it looks like she's going for a blue. We are going to just clean up wave. So now we have enough money. Are we going to back or hang out? Looks like we're going to hang out. Hit her with the one. Let it do some tick damage. Taken for 29 right now. Just let Chonga do her thing on the wave. There's not much we can do. So she's been pretty good at using her immunity frame from her two whenever I use my two. And just in terms of level order for the abilities, we're going to want to max out the one first. And then we're going to want to start putting points into the ult whenever we can and points into the three instead of the two. And the reason we are putting points into the three instead of the two is because it's going to extend the duration of the stun from the three. Whereas as you level up the two, it increases damage and it increases the heal you receive. We already have, or we're working on Bancroft's talent, so we're already going to have some healing going on. I think the extended stun is probably more valuable. What are you even doing? And your three does a little bit more damage. It has the exact same power scaling, but the base damage is just a little bit more. So we're going to use the one on the wave, let it take a few times, cast the two, capture some souls or some demons, pick up the blue. So as long as we have our one, we should be okay for clearing lane. Your middle tower is under attack. Uh, oh, sorry. Looks like we're just going to kind of use basics to hold the wave in front of the tower. So we do have teleport back up, we had to use it to get back to the lane, but now that we have it back up, we should probably back. So it looks like Chong is going all in, she just used her ultimate, I'm going to use my ultimate to get the bonus protections and kind of scare her off. Oh, just missed that one, that probably would have killed me. Looks like she's still chasing, and now she backs off. We're going to go ahead and back, pick up Bancroft's Talon, and then teleport right back. By the tier 2 boots. And we're heading back to lane. We only missed the one or two archers. So she's very weak. We're going to pop the till. There's her immunity. Gobble gobble. Easy peasy. So we came back. We had a lot more power than when we left lane. And Chango was a little weaker than she has been. So we were able to just melt her. We're going to go for the totem. Then we're going to make our way to lane. Me team. Nice job. So since we already have a lifesteal um, from Bancroft's Talon and a little bit built into our kit, we are going to be going for the cooldown boots. Enemies in the left lane. Looks like Chong is going for her mana. So we're just going to kind of hang out in lane, clear this lane, see if we can get pressure. Let the ticks do a little bit of damage, get out of Chonga's way so she can't damage me with the abilities. Hit her with the stun just for a little poke. Looks like I was trying to engage. Then I saw the blue was up and was like, nah, it's not worth it, let's just go for the blue. We're gonna pick up the blue. We do have a wave pushing tower, but we should be able to clean this up. 
is under attack. Yes. Unfortunately, we missed that. So we're both level 9. Enemies I think I might have a small lead on her. I'm about to hit level 10. We hit her with the... Hit her with the 1, she dodges the 3. We're able to use the 2 on her. Did not do a whole lot of damage. She misses her ult. We are pretty weak. We're going to heal up from our 2 and from Bancroft's. And then here comes Erlong Shen, Neath ults. Beautiful play. I didn't even have to do anything right there. That was all Neath and Erlong Shen. So now that they have rotated over and cleared so some pressure for me, I'm going to clear this lane. I see that there's a little bit of a tussle going on in the jungle, so I'm going to make my way over. We're going to go for their blue. So right here, I miss all my abilities on this nemesis, and that's why she's able to secure the blue. Okay. Whoops. So I say, whoops, as on Kui. It's not the worst thing in the world. I felt like if I connected my one and my three, Erlon might have had the setup to get the kill onto nemesis. I just missed my one, my two, and I'm pretty sure I missed my three. So right here, we're gonna go ahead and proxy the next wave. We're gonna run up past the one, and I'm noticing that my one is killing the archers right away, so I just cast it and then use my three on the front minions. Changa ults me, that is okay. There's her immunity. Go ahead and cast that. So we're doing okay damage, but she is just healing everything back up. We do have our teleport, so we could back at any point in time. It looks like we're going to go and secure our blue, and then maybe show face in lane. But we should be backing relatively soon. An enemy has been slain. What are you even doing? Looks like there's a team fight breaking out in mid. Chonga's still over here, so nothing that we need to worry slain. about. We're going to use our one on the wave. Run back. Let the ticks do their damage. Carry me, team. Okay. Your right tower. Be careful. Amazing. Gonna go ahead and back. Or not. Missed my one. Yeah. So now I should definitely back. That was very slow reaction time. Okay. Give me that. So we got the cooldown boots, we thought about going breastplate, but we're going against the Changa. That would not immediately help us. So instead we're going to go Gem of Isolation. This item works really well on Zhang Kui for a couple of reasons, works well with a couple of his abilities. His one already has a slow, so if you can add an additional slow on top of that, it's going to really slow down the enemy team and they're going to notice it and it's going to be very annoying to deal with. Also, with Zonkui's ultimate, if they are standing near you, they are going to get hit. You can't miss if they are in range. And that's going to increase their slow, which means that they're not going to be able to get out of the radius of your ult. So you're going to be able to kind of chase them down and confirm the kill. It's going to provide us a little bit of power and a little bit of health, but you're really getting Gem of Isolation for the slow. This is kind of a more mage build than a solo build. It's a little bit of a hybrid. I mean, if I was playing mid Zonkui, I'd probably go Bancrofts and cooldown boots. Probably not Gem of Isolation third item in mid, but in solo lane, it works out really well. Just checking their blue real quick. Didn't see anything. Chonga is back lane. We're going to cast her one on the wave. Let's see if we can do any damage to her. I don't even think she saw me in that situation. So right here, we are kind of weak. This isn't exactly the fight we want, but we do see help coming in from behind. We're going to go ahead and ult because we saw Erlong was here. We missed our two. Unfortunately, we pop our three. She ults. I think she's able to get out from that. 
Yeah, so we're just gonna peel off and go clean up the wave. Maybe hit our blue buff, maybe proxy the wave. Looks like Nemesis is pushing up on Erlong Shen. Uller is as well. I uh, hope Erlong can get out. Looks like he's going to be able to, so we're just gonna pick up. Oh, spoke too early. So we're just gonna pick up our blue buff. We do have enough money for Gem of Isolation, but our teleport is down, so we're gonna hang out in lane just a little bit. We do not have a tower, but we do have lifesteal and a stun, so I feel confident in pushing up to the halfway mark and contesting the minions, even if that means I have to run farther back to get to my tower. We try to use the one to get the minions, and then she immunity frames my damage, which is good for her. So right here, uh, we are in a bad situation. We're going to throw the one onto the wave, try to get a little bit of a heal. Um, and Nemesis rotates over as well. She pops her shield for my two. If she didn't pop her shield, we might have been able to kill her. Um, and even if she didn't rotate over, I think Chango was going to get us. Our positioning there was just pretty bad. We were a little too aggressive trying to go for that blue. Okay, so after... The Gem of Isolation, we're going to be going Jade Emperor's Crown, and what this item is going to do is it's going to give us physical protections and also reduce the enemy physical power if they are standing near us. We're getting this to kind of deal with Nemesis. It should help. It's not the best item in the world, but it definitely should help whenever we're dealing with Nemesis. So we do have our teleport. Let's go ahead and teleport on over to Solo. Do not see Changa here. So Chang is probably rotating mid or backing right now. Enemy missing right. I let the team know that nobody's in right lane. Take this jungle box. Gonna clean up this wave. We're 15, Chang is a 14, so we do have a little bit of a lead. There's Changa, so she's returning the lane. We're able to clean up the minions. We're going to make our way to our blue buff. Retreat! 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 Ultimate is ready. Let it tick a little bit, and then we're going to cast another ability. Pick up the blue buff. Time to go face Changa. So if I'm not mistaken, at this point in the game, Changa has Divine Ruin. Yeah. There's the visual animation for it. So she is in a much better to fight me than I am to fight her. So we, we're we gonna ult, we're gonna try to turn anything we can. We use our three, and we did a lot of damage to her. Unfortunately, I think she has the better abilities. We're gonna blink, throw the one, cast the done and then cast the two and we are able to win that so Chonga sh I think should have won that I think she had the items to tilt the battle in her favor we just kind of turned and burned her when I don't think she was expecting it and whenever we turned and burned her I think she used her immunity frame so we were able to blink up be a little unpredictable and then just cast our abilities on her and then able to secure the kill So, as usual, solo lane usually gets teleport. It allows you to get back to lane without really missing any farm. And then we also got blink because we have gem of isolation. So if we see a group of people running away, we can blink in, use our ultimate, and then they are all slowed. Um, so here's a nemesis. I don't think this is going to go very well. We stun. We ult. But I think she's staying right out of our ultimate distance. So we just kind of burned our ult for nothing. She's able to just dash up and clean the damage. So we get Jade Emperor's Crown. Hopefully that will help us with Nemesis a little bit.
So if we were going against a physical warrior, or a hunter, or an assassin, we probably would have picked up Jade Emperor's Crown instead of Gem of Isolation, maybe switched the build order on those two items. If you're going against physical, Jade Emperor's Crown is a very strong item. Um, I probably would have built Gem of Isolation at some point, but if I was going against physical, it probably would have been a little bit later. And for this game, I think that Changa is manageable without getting any magical defense. We are going to pick some up eventually. It's just early game, I don't think we really needed it because we had enough heals. So if we just played around our heals and sustain, we could kind of get away with the no defensive items. Especially since we get 30 protections from our passive. So right here we're going to clean up mid. And then we should make a rotation over. I see Yorm rotating in on Erlong. I'm going to kind of rotate behind him while pushing this wave. This might not be a good fight. We are pretty deep. We're going to cast the one up. There's the nemesis. Cast the stun. Then we're going to cast our ult immediately. Kind of peel around for our team. Yeah, so that was just a very bad place to be. We should not have followed that Erlong Shen. He has a getaway. We do not have a getaway. We should have cleared that second wave in mid and then just rotated over to solo. Yeah, they got three picks off of that. So that was not a good play. Oh, I'm sorry, love. So, Erlong is our support. That might be the issue that I had. I thought he was our jungle, and I was like, okay, cool, I'm gonna move in with our jungle. Turns out I was our support, and he was just like, oh, team fight? I'm out. But that's okay. We're gonna teleport over to solo. Tranga is in mid, but our team looks like they're gonna be able to respond to it. So while there's a little bit of tussle going on in the left, we are going to get our blue and push right lane. Okay, it looks like we're not going to push the solo lane. We're going to go back mid, see if there's anything we can do. We do have our ultimate and we also do have our blank. Why am I so good at the game? A little bit of an aggressive blank. We use our one. We probably casted our three just a little bit too early, but we're able to ult them. We're doing some decent damage and we're able to push them off a tower. Unfortunately, we don't have the items online to finish any of them. I hit her with the immunity frame, but it seemed like the immunity frame lasts a little bit longer. Colin's able to push up, get one of the kills, push the other people back. So now I have the mana and the sustain to just go in, get some health back, and then go clean up my wave. So after Jade Emperor's Crown, we are going to be going Voidstone. Voidstone is going to give us some magical protections while also reducing the magical protections of the enemy team. This item works pretty well, Zonkui. And then we have our physical and magical defense items online. They might not be the most effective items, but they kind of work well with Zonkui. So we did get a Gold Fury kill. It's always nice to see the team getting objectives. We also have Poseidon on Pyromancer. I don't think he needs us, but we're going to go ahead and rotate over, clean it up. And then our minion wave should be able to push and take out that tier 1 tower in solo lane. We're going to hit these harpies. We are level 20, the first one on our team. Doesn't mean we're having a great game, it just means that we farmed effectively. Nemesis has really been a hard counter to us. We don't have any dash, and she's playing reasonably smart. She's not chasing me within the range of my ult. She's waiting for it to finish and then engaging. Part of that was positioning on my part on at least two of those kills. 
If I would have had a teammate to support me when I was invading blue, I might have been able to get away, and I definitely shouldn't have been trying to invade their red. Looks like Changa is over in solo. We miss our one on the board. We're able to cast the two, get the kill. So their damage is up. I don't know why our team isn't hitting it, so we're going to go ahead and start hitting it. I'm going to go ahead and pick it up. I do have a mana potion. Casting an ultimate just to get some damage off, apply some slows to everyone. Tukolin is able to go and push the Nemesis. And then we're able to clean up the Yorm. So we should be able to take this tier to mid tower. Chunk is over and left. Between the three of us grouped, I think we might be able to take this mid Phoenix. Yeah, their team's about to respawn. It's probably not worth it. Yep, with no support. I don't think there's much of a reason to. Although it looks like Meep is coming back. We hit Chongo with the one. It's going to be doing some tick damage. Now we're going to retreat. Just go ahead and back here. We're going to get Voidstone online. And then after that, we are going to be going for Divine Ruin. The reason we're going for Divine Ruin is as solo lane, you typically want to pick up some form of anti-heal. A lot of the time on Warriors, that's going to come as a defensive anti-heal. We kind of have three hybrid defense items going online. So we have the Gem of Isolation, which is giving us health, crowd control reduction, um, and some utility in a slow. The Jade Emperor's Crown is giving us some power, some physical protections, and reducing the enemy's physical protections. The Gen, the Voidstone is giving us physical protections. Right here, we're going to use our ult on Changa. Yeah, I don't think she was getting out of that. I think that was just a matter of solo lane standing in front of solo lane, and whichever team can rotate first is going to get the kill. So we are able to clean up that nemesis, and we are grouped as four, with the wave pretty far pushed up in right lane, so we should be able to just take this tower. I see Ool coming up behind, so I kind of rotate back just to check. I see him again. He's boxing with me. I come over. If I can get some damage on him, he's probably dead. But he backs up. Looks like Poseidon is able to clean him up. Why am I so good at the game? Very nice. So Kikolin's still pushing right. It's just Yorm and Hebo up. Haven't seen Hebo almost all game. He's over in the carry lane. So I, they're just standing. I hit him with the slow and he hit him with the root and then he just melt him. So next is the middle phoenix. We're gonna go ahead and just group as a team, take this. There's a healer, looks like he's running. So I make the call to attack for fire giant. It does not look like my team's coming with me, so I'm gonna try to stay close to my team. An enemy has been slain. Looks like the team was able to get the hebo. Okay. Gold Fury is about to spawn, so let's go ahead and make our way over there. So we only have one person on our team who is not a level 20. They still have three people. So this game has been going in favor of our team pretty heavily. A solo laner and with some sustain. I'm just going to go ahead and tank this for the team. We see Chonga's clearing the fire minion waves in solo lane. That's going to allow us to make a rotation over to Pyromancer. So we're going to secure Pyromancer and that's going to allow us to leave spawn a little bit faster with a little bit more movement speed. So it looks like their team is crashing over. Missed the one. Missed a lot of ones this game. It's a little unfortunate. So 
So we're going to make our way over to our blue buff. So this build has worked out okay for this game. I don't think, or I don't know if this would work out in every game. And I don't think it's the most effective item sequence to build. But I had a lot of fun with it and it seemed to provide a decent amount of utility for the team. What are you even doing? So we do have our ult, we're going to go ahead and ult and then we're going to focus the stronger. If we can get her heals out of the way, we will be able to win the team fight. And that's two, so they have three people down. We just need to group up and push the titan. I don't think there's too much that Ahibo and Ul can do. They have to hit all of their stuff in a really effective way. We do have our blink. Not sure if we're going to use it here, but I think this is going to be the final push into the titan room. Titan's getting weak, Hebo uses his two. Neath got poked out a little bit. We're going to blink in, we're going to use our three, we're going to cast our one, we're going to use our two. Got a lot of damage off, unfortunately we did not get the kill. But yeah, it looks like this is over. Well, if you guys enjoyed this video and if you've made it to the end, Please subscribe for more content like this. We upload six to seven times a week. And if you want to see any particular God played, just let me know. Thank you for spending some time with me. Hope you have a good day. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.